Now, moving on and uh, bringing it to uh, Right here, back to Africa, we see it's day four of the IMF World Bank annual meeting at Marrakesh, Morocco, and we still have our team of reporters uh, bringing us uh, up to speed on proceedings. Uh, today, an attendee joins us from Marrakesh, Dr. Bumi uh, Bajama, head group, uh, corporate and investment uh, banking at Echo Banks. He's joining us um, right there in Marrakesh. Uh, great to have you on the show. Hi, Ladi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great to have you all the way from um, Marrakesh. What are some of the high points of the meetings you've attended so far? Oh, fantastic. So um, we've had a lot of meetings. Um, in terms of the highlights, number one was the session by the IMF president, Madame Georgina. Um, the major thing part of that is that the world has gone through unprecedented crisis in terms of the global financial crisis. We had the Russian Ukrainian crisis. We had uh, COVID coming from COVID. And then the, from the Russian crisis, you've had inflationary pressure and all of the attendant uh, impact on global economy. What has come out strongly is that for the world to emerge from this global shock, especially from a, development, a developing country perspective, we would need a global collaboration, economic integration. In place of fragmentation, we all need to come together to address the myriad of issues that is facing our world right now. Assuming we're able to pull together and unify ourselves, then we will have, we will be able to command transformational growth. If all of the developed countries, the less developed countries come together, then it is projected by the expansion in global growth could be as high as about 8% over the next four years. So if you take the world's uh, GDP of about $112 trillion, add 8% to it, that is the benefit of collaboration. In form of, uh, from collaboration, you also have the expansion in Green Energy Initiative. The Green Energy, powering the Green Energy Initiative will be the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is both a source of risk and a source of productive growth. If you are able to announce the opportunities in the green energy space in form of transformation, then you will be able to add an additional 3% to the world um, economic growth. But all of this will only happen in place of collaboration. If there is no collaboration, and what you've seen um, in recent years is that in place of collaboration, you've seen a lot of economic fragmentation. We're talking about trade facilitation measure, but rather than having trade facilitation measure, you are having trade restriction. Uh, according to the IMF president, from the 2017 till now, over a five-year period, you've had a number of trade restrictions, moving from about 500 trade restrictions to over 3,000. 3,000 in the space of five years, when we are talking about boosting integration and all of those, is not good for our world. If we are not able to address that, then it means that due to fragmentation, due to disintegration, rather than pulling together, then remove the economy of like Japan, which is the third economy in the world with their four trillion GDP, and add, uh, add Germany to that, which is another four billion, remove about eight eight point three trillion from the world economy. That is the impact of disintegration. But if we're able to pull together, right. then we address the issue facing the world right now, which is high inflationary pressure, uh, balance of payment crisis from budgetary issues, and then the long time one, which is decelerating growth, slow growth. Um, another highlight for me was, was the real presentation, which is the world economic outlook. From the world economic outlook, you've seen that the projected GDP growth for the world is just about three percent for this year and then 2.9 for last year that is the lowest it's been since 2001 except during the global financial crisis right it's the lowest it has been but we can turn all of those around if the developing economy are able to help the all emerging right. economy as well as the less developing economy to come out of the present crisis that they have right now. Right. If we do not do that, then you have a number of countries in Africa where um, they are supposed to be resource rich, but they are not able to harness the value chain. What we need from the world into the next level of growth is for us to be able to address 
the supply chain uh, cohesion and integration. All right, the Dr. Bad. to enhance the supply chain network will mean that African economy, who are the major supplier of raw material that are needed even to power the green energy initiative, can then begin to harness the benefit of the resources they have. So it then means that resources can move freely from um, the south to the north. The All north right. is where the concentration of capital is right now. But the South is where the youthful population and the all of the materials. All use. right, Dr. So Badrua. Help the South to develop. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, Dr. Badrua. I, I love the I love the energy. You know, right there, I can feel the energy. You know, from uh, from you and uh, your environment right there. But I'm sure that there are a lot of conversations. You know, about uh, participation of private sector in uh, dealing with uh, debt uh, issues in Africa. Bring me up to speed on some of those conversations. Okay, thank you. So in terms of the current issue, like I said, the major issue focus and affecting the less developed economy or the developing economy is the issue of debt crisis. What you have is that each country individually goes to look for financing. What we're saying is that in terms of moving forward, in terms of boosting integration, we need to have, um, we need to empower the financial institution in developing economies because you need to support the private sector. You can only support the private sector if there's financing available. If there's financing available, then they can produce more, enhance the value chain, and be able to increase their outputs to the world. So what you need to do is that by ourselves, because of all of the rating um, issues that we have because of our imperfection and all of the budgetary issues that we have now, there is limited fiscal scape, uh, space for African countries. So the only way you can do is to boost financing to this economy by empowering the private sector financial institutions as well as the African focused developmental um, institution like the AFDB, the uh, AFREXIM, who are powering African trade. But um, if you do not do that, it means that the African economy individually will go and then they will not be able to command commensurate return. Then the high cost of debt will continue to impoverish them because high cost of debt means high cost of financing, high cost of production, and their inability to compete effectively. So if we are able to empower the developmental institution, uh, then you help them. Another thing is also the issue of rating agency. If you were at the session with uh, Mr. Mo Ibrahim yesterday, he was talking about the perception of rating agency and how it impacts ability of African countries to be able to borrow internationally. And you know, it, that is true because if you remember the Kenya situation, um, they, uh, Kenya said they wanted to uh, fast track the repayment of their debt from 2004 to 2003. That led to negative um, downgrade for Kenya. So, you know, then you're saying they are hasty because the government is saying, I'm going to, it's willing buyer, willing seller principle, but you have downgraded them already. And because of that, the projected 50% reduction in Kenya's they did not materialize because the government have to pull back. You have a number of African countries that are in debt crisis right now. Of all of the people in debt crisis, about eight African countries. You have Ghana, who has just gone through the IMF uh, staff uh, framework. You have Zambia, you have Sri Lanka, you have Lebanon with their debt to GDP of well above 500,000%. You have Kenya with debt to GDP of 60%. You have Ghana, where the interest service to revenue is well above 113%. So except the world collaborates and help this economy, it, right. it will be difficult. But the good thing yes. is that they are receiving the help, and that's why you see that all of the reception that was uh, projected have not materialized. So we're okay. not in solvent, insolvency state. There's no solvency crisis because they have been backstop for each of these seven economies that are going through significant um, debt crisis. The challenge is how do we ensure not many more people or many more countries will fall into that debt trap right. or debt situation so that we all can right. mitigate instability? Going forward. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Bajamo. Definitely, we don't want the kiss of debt on any African country uh, as we uh, move ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bumi Bajamo, head, Group Corporate uh, and Investment Banking at Echo Bank. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye bye.